Dienstag weiterhin auf der PDSA 2018 in Toronto. Das ist die größte Bergbaumesse der Welt. Wir sind hier mit Nick Appleyard von TriStar Gold, einem Unternehmen, das wir unseren Lesern vor kurzem vorgestellt haben. Und wir wollen uns jetzt mal ein paar Informationen holen, einen Überblick verschaffen über das, was passiert und noch passieren soll. Nick, welcome. Thank you. Um, I just said we introduced the company to our readers just a short while ago for the very first time. Mm -hmm. So this is a good opportunity to give us an idea of what you're about and further details of what you're planning to do. Okay. So perhaps we could start with a short introduction who you are, what your track record is. Okay. Yeah, so my name is Nick Appleyard. I'm the CEO and President of TriStar Gold. Um, before TriStar, I'm, I was actually a geologist by training. and. Um, I was with International Minerals for a long time. We sold that to Hothschild's Mining and ran a company called Chaparral Gold. We sold to Waterton. And, and after that, we went looking for the next thing. And, um, and it's TriStar, and we're very excited about it. So TriStar is looking for gold in Brazil. Um, tell us a bit about the location of the property first before we get to what's happening there, because um, is it in, in the jungle? Is yeah. there indigenous people you have to yeah. talk to? Um, so it's a great question. Location in mining is as important as it is in real estate. Um, we're in cent <coughs> the southern portion of Pará State. Um, that's pretty well central Brazil. Um, the advantage we have in that, we're remote from big communities. Um, so you don't get these objections from mining where there's a high net land use competing with you. Um, but we're also very close to a highway. We're very close to power lines, we're very close to water supply. And we do have a community about 20 kilometers away who are um, people who are used to mining, used to logging, used to agriculture. Okay. So they're not going to object. They're not indigenous people. They're transplanted from Europe. Okay. So um, let's get to it. You, you are not looking for gold. You're looking for more gold because you already found gold. Yes. But um, what kind of deposit or, or gold uh, did you find there? Okay. This is um, it's, it's a paleoplastic deposit. This really means. It was two billion years ago, there was a mountain range that was being weathered away. There were gold deposits in that mountain range, and they were effectively just mes the gold was transported with into rivers and was deposited in alluvial fans. Two billion years ago, that was just buried, and now we found it again. Um, what that means to us is it's very clean. It's just sand, sand grains and gold grains, no sulfide, no bad elements for as far as the environmental is concerned. Okay, but uh, doesn't that make it harder to, to prove up the reserve? Because otherwise you say, okay, we've got this ore body, um, we drill it here, we drill it there, we drill it once in between, we know how long it is. Um, is that the same? Can you do that with the drilling and the plaster? Absolutely, yes. We get um, great consistency. In this. These plaster deposits, paleoplasters are, each one is different. Um, with ours, we have a fairly fine gold, it's well distributed. Um, and we see that when we see where the informal miners worked in the 1990s, there are kilometer after kilometer of informal workings where they just kept following the gold and it just kept being there. So it's very consistent. Okay, so tell us about the resource you have so far. Um, you, when did your bus start uh, going in there? Okay, so, so I got involved in the company just over two years ago now. And uh, at that point we had less than 300,000 ounces in resources. And, um, and realistically, the company was too small, the project was too small for anyone to take notice. Um, what we realized was that there is about 12 kilometers of what we call the high priority target. Our high priority target is when we have the conglomerate horizon, the, where the gold was deposited, coming to surface. Um, we have gold in soil around there, and we have Garam Perry working through. If we have those three things together, um, that's a high priority target we believe we'll find gold there. We've got those three things coincident over 12 kilometers of strike. Nice. And now we've drilled just over half of that. And in December, we announced our first big resource of um, a million ounces of inferred at 1.2 grams a ton, and half a million ounces of indicated at 1.8 grams per ton of gold. So, so the project has grown by multiple of five over the last 18 months. It's certainly impressive, but I don't think you're going to stop there, right? No, you absolutely plan not. on more drilling? Yeah, absolutely. So we've raised, just recently raised some more money, and um, First thing we do, we mobilize more drink, drill rigs to site. So they arrived at the site yesterday, getting set up today, start drilling tomorrow. Oh cool, and that's very good. Yes. And um, so next thing is another resource update. Um, what are the next steps after that? Yeah, so um, the plan is drill as much as we can this year. We would drill half, we would like to drill the other half. 
at the end of the year, do a new resource estimate, see where that gets to, see if we can continue with the success we've had so far, um, and then we would do a, a, an economic study based on that new resource. So either at the end of this year or early next year, depending how long the drilling takes. That's, that's a sort of a short term goal, in mining at least. Um, yes. What, what's the ultimate goal? Well, you, you told me uh, you were with this company, it was taken over, and with the other company it was taken over. Is that what you're uh, aiming to do with the uh, Ultim Tristar? Ultimately, also? that's always the goal. Um, our, our business model is really based on the fact that the large companies are not replacing their reserves, they're not doing exploration, and they're not developing these large projects and bringing them forward. So we figured we'll do that for them. We'll take this small deposit, drill it out, make a large resource, show the economics work, and um, and then hopefully be very attractive to a larger company. So yes, that is the ultimate goal. And, and do you see, what do you see as the, the minimum amount of resources or reserves you have to show up for to be interesting to a major? Well, they're starting to pay a lot of attention there. When we had 300,000 ounces and, and some good ideas, but, yeah, it was too small. Now we're at a million plus the half a million. Um, it's definitely getting attention. They're definitely thinking, okay, this is something I need to know about and watch. Um, if we can grow this significantly um, and beyond this, you know, we don't know where it'll get to. Hopefully, north of two million, but we don't know. Um, that will be very interesting. I think that's uh, right now. It's probably already at the critical place, you know, to get attention. And um, you said you raised the money recently, so yes, you, you financed to the end of the year for the drilling, or will you have to get no. some more money? In? Yeah, no, no, we sort of believe very much in um, the money we get from the shareholders is to go into the ground to increase the value of the property, so we will be drilling aggressively, um, we will need more money um, before the end of the year to continue the drill program. Okay. So we know what you're trying to do, and now we'll be watching to see how you uh, deliver, hopefully, yep. for us and uh, you. Yep. And um, we'll talk again then. Okay, thank you. Thanks thank you very, very much. much. Okay.